I want to welcome all of you to the Mark Twain branch of the Hartford Public Library at Lewis Fox Media Center at Hartford Public High School. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a, a wonderful, wonderful collaboration and will continue to be a wonderful collaboration. Selfishly, and I'm glad that I've got a lot of my students from the Law and Government Academy here with us today. Selfishly, I am thrilled to be infusing new learning resources and new research resources for my students here uh, into our building. And additionally, I'm happy to be making Hartford Public High School even more accessible to patrons throughout the community. This is a wonderful project. I'm thrilled to have been part of it, and today is a great day for celebration. I want to welcome all of you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and it is my pleasure at this time to introduce our superintendent of schools, Dr. Christina Kishimoto. So wonderful to see everyone. Thank you for joining us for this incredible event. Uh, we're sitting in a historic building, uh, 1638 the second longest running high school in the United States. Um, this, is, uh, this is a place of history. And what's so exciting is that not only is this uh, high school a place of history, uh, th there's such rich history here in the city of Hartford that just makes this an incredible place to be a resident, to be a student, to be part of uh, an inc incredible community. And so I want to first extend my thank you to the mayor of the city, Mayor Segarra, for being here and also being just this great partner as we continue to look at how do we increase the opportunities for our students and really engage every community partner as part of what we deliver on in terms of a great education and a great place to live, play, and work. Uh, and Matt Poland, who just has been, it's just a wonderful leader for the Hartford Public, uh, for the Hartford, uh, uh, Public Library System and just has been so open to having these continuous dialogues around how do we increase uh, access for all of our students and our residents to these great uh, literary kind of resources that we have and to really think about this as a collaboration in terms of improving education but also improving uh, the services and the opportunities for the residents here in the city of Hartford. I'd like to also acknowledge David McDonald, who is our chair of the Board of Education, who's with us and has been um, a leader in terms of the strategic plan that's going to continue to lead us forward here in the city of Hartford. Uh, Hartford Financial Services, uh, the um, uh, uh, Asylum Hill and the West End um, Association are all great partners with us as we continue to look at building our neighborhoods uh, collectively and collaboratively collaboratively. And so I thank everyone for our collective work here, and this is just a great day for us. Thank you. At this time, and let me make sure I, again, say titles right and all that to give credit to everyone's hard work. I'm very happy to introduce the CEO uh, of the Hartford Public Library, Mr. Matt Poland. Welcome everyone to uh, the new Mark Twain branch uh, at Hartford Public High School. Uh, one of the great things about this branch is that it has been in this neighborhood for 81 years. Uh, it started in 1930 on uh, one of the rooms of the Mark Twain House. So we are moved a little bit closer to our original home here, and uh, we thank uh, the Mark Twain House for being very supportive of what we're doing. Uh, the library in the 21st century is an institution of public education for all ages. And uh, we have a responsibility to support uh, the work that the Hartford Public Schools is doing with their children every day. And so this collaboration, which is added to the collaboration that, ex that started 10 years ago at the Sand Rockins School in the uh, north end of the city, uh, is another uh, testament to leaders in this city understanding the importance of collaboration and of also having corporate sponsors and funders who are willing to uh, participate in making this city uh, the best city in the United States. Uh, we have a goal, which is not unlike uh, the goal of Dr. Kishimoto, of being a national uh, model for a 21st century urban library. Uh, we think by making these kinds of strides uh, to support education, uh, we can do it together, and so can the schools. They've already made significant reform and have helped our city, and we're very excited to support that reform uh, in the days ahead. 
Uh, I also want to thank our board, uh, Greg Davis, who's our president, for leading a very supportive board about the, uh, the move to coming here, and our community partners who have just been incredible. Uh, whether it's the Asylum Hill Group or the West End Group, uh, they have wanted a new branch forever. And we've had a few false starts over the years to find a new place, uh, but this time uh, we found one that makes sense not only to the neighborhood community, but to our students. And so we, uh, we love to be here. We're very happy to be here. And I'm very happy to say that we have the partnership of both the, the private sector in the Hartford and uh, the public sector led by our mayor, Pedro Segarra. And I would like uh, to turn over the podium to him and for all of you to give him um, a great welcome because of the support he's had for both the Hartford <coughs> School System and the Hartford Public Library. Mayor Segarra. Thank you so much. And, and this really, really is a classic and a perfect example of the Board of Ed, the library, philanthropic and private organizations along with community organizations moving forward to do something that is just so, so incredibly, so incredibly uh, needed uh, by our community. Um, Dr. Kishimoto and I used to probably visit the same public library in the South Bronx at 138th Street in Mott, Mott Haven and it was it was and continues to be one of the most special places that I can remember growing up in the South Bronx. It was a place of refuge, it was a place of learning, it was a place of discipline, uh, but more importantly, it was a place of, of hope. Um, and, and my hope uh, for this branch is that we continue, that we continue to use it as a great resource for our community. So I want to thank Mr. Poland and your library board and your executives from, from your board. Dr. Kishimoto and the Board of Education, as well as the private partnerships, because this is really a special place. Um, you know, when, when Thomas Hooker uh, came to these lands and declared it to be the House of Hope, um, I think that within those hopes was a place where we could perfect uh, a form of government that depends on community community and civic participation, and at the same time, uh, a connection of, of, of those individuals to their government. It's somewhat befitting that this is the Mark Twain uh, public library branch. Mark Twain says that a public library is a most enduring of memorials, uh, the trustiest monument for the preservation of an event or a name or an affection. For it, and it only, is respected by wars and revolutions and survives them. So this is the place for our children, our youth, our community to get its knowledge that will make them survive almost anything uh, that can be thrown their way. So congratulations again to all of you. Uh, thank you for being here. And um, it's, a, it's a proud day. You know, we've been at this now for trying to get a new home for the Mark Twain Library now for several years. I know that West End Civic Association and the Asylum Hill Organization were great advocates of this branch, so I hope that in some small measure uh, we've accomplished something together. So thank you so much. Would that uh, things were magical when you wanted to do things and didn't cost any money. And it would be great if we could just wish them to be so. Uh, but it's important for us to uh, have partners who support our ideals. And uh, we are delighted to say that uh, it did cost a bit of money to move here. And uh, we didn't have the resources uh, to do that. And, and so we had a great partnership uh, with a significant contribution from the Hartford and a significant contribution from our city. And I'm eternally grateful for those contributions because it allowed us to provide uh, this, this wonderful space, not just the space you're sitting in, uh, but access to this entire 11 and a half thousand square foot library, which is very beautiful. And so I'd like uh, to uh, thank uh, specifically the Hartford Financial Group. And we have here today Alan Crisco, who's uh, the Executive Vice President and General Counsel, who'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, and being the general counsel, I'm also uh, really pleased to see students from the Law and Government Affairs uh, High School here. And I look forward to welcome you all into the Bar Association in a couple <laughs> of more years. So that's great. We're very pleased to be able to support the move of the Mark Twain branch into the high school here. From our perspective, it's a win-win. So it's going to enable uh, residents of the Hartford to have continued access to these facilities, to the online education opportunities, the seminars. And for the students, we think it really provides an opportunity for them to cultivate 
lifelong learning, and that's so important for all of us in our lives. Uh, you know, our corporate headquarters is just a couple of blocks away from here. We do consider this to be our neighborhood, and we are committed to working with the people and the institutions in the Asylum Hill neighborhood to make it a better environment. And so not long ago, we announced a five-year, $7 million commitment dedicated primarily to education opportunities, to community support services, and to neighborhood revitalization. So we we're really pleased to be able to partner with this because it uh, actually fits into all three of those categories. So very, very proud to be part of the program. Thanks. Thank you, Ellen. Um, in, of course, in a, in a library, in a public library system, the support of the community is extremely important. And in our city, I think we've learned over time that our libraries are very important to our residents. And the Mark Twain branch has been important to the two organizations that uh, carry the spirit of this, um, this, this, these neighborhoods uh, uh, into reality. And so today I have uh, Bernie Michael here from the, um, uh, the Asylum Hill Neighborhood Association who'd like to say a few words about the library in this uh, momentous occasion. Thank you, Matt. When I uh, first moved into Asylum Hill a little over 15 years ago, uh, one of the first things I did was to join an organization that at the time was called the Asylum Hill Neighborhood Problem Solving Committee. And one of the first problems that we uh, kind of took on was to find a new home for the Mark Twain branch of the Hartford Public Library. Uh, at that time, it was something that was desperately needed, and it never got better. Uh, in the succeeding years. Uh, as I drive around the neighborhood now, I, I often look at, at the, the number of buildings that we looked at, the places we thought that would make a great uh, home for the library. And I can remember traipsing through them with Louise Blaylock and looking at them and, and thinking, you know, how would this look as a library and what could we do? And of course, none of them ever materialized. But I think at the time that the vision that Louise had would not have equaled what we've got here today. And I know that for all of us that, that went through those buildings with her and, and had that dream, uh, that while none of us had expected that it would take this long, uh, all of us are pleased with the fantastic results that we have. So today is definitely a day uh, for us to celebrate. Um, it seems in Asylum Hill that we don't get near enough days to celebrate, although they are coming a little bit more frequently than they used to. Uh, so today definitely is a day to celebrate, but tomorrow I think is, should be the first day that we begin the next part of this project, which is to bring people into this library to use it. Because it will, all of our work will have gone to naught if it isn't really used. And whenever you move something from one place to another, uh, people lose track of it a little bit. So we need to talk about it, we need to remind people that it's here, we need to promote it, and we need to use it ourselves. We need to lead by example. So starting tomorrow, I hope to see many of you back here again, using the library and enjoying it. And thank you to everyone who helped make this possible. And we also have Rand Cooper from the West End Civic Association. Rand? Um, I'd like to share a few words about, and more important, a few words by Mark Twain. Um, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here representing WECA, but I'm also personally thrilled because I, I live four blocks from here. I'm a writer, and uh, living in this neighborhood, if you're a writer, you find it fairly sublime and, and, and amazing, and frankly, at times, mind-blowing to think that Mark Twain worked and wrote those books right here. Mere blocks from where we are. Um, it's sometimes hard to find ways to convey this amazement to, to kids who perhaps are inclined to think of Twain as a dusty historical relic. I'm also a basketball junkie. Today uh, would be like opening a new basketball court in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, you know, three blocks from where Michael Jordan grew up playing basketball. Uh, for anyone who loves literature, not only is a library a sacred place, but this particular sighting of this library is especially sacred. Now, as I say that, I can sort of hear Twain really cutting into me a little bit for perhaps being pompous. Um, Twain specialized in aphorisms. He, he, really, he left a veritable encyclopedia of pithy, witty, highly ironic remarks about 
human institutions and human nature. I want to share a few of them. Here's one of my favorites. It's perfect for people of a certain age that is over 40 or so. Twain said, age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's one. I have a five-year-old daughter who goes to Webster School. Here's one for any a parent of a, uh, whose, whose kid might need some boosting. Remember, Twain said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And here's one of my favorites, and it's rather obscure. I don't even know why I like it, but I find it hilarious. It's Twain uh, discussing his plan for the apocalypse. He said, if the world comes to an end, he wrote, I want to be in Cincinnati. Everything comes there ten years later. <laughs> All of this makes Twain one of those writers about whom you say, I really wish he were alive today. I would love to hear him on blank, fill in the topic. We're opening this library at a tumultuous moment for print culture. It's a time when we don't even know whether books will be around X number of years from now, or if so, in what form. I would love to hand Mark Twain a Kindle and hear his reaction. Now, I'm sure he would actually be very excited by a lot of what the digital age has to offer. Twain loved innovations. He loved new technologies and gadgets. He invested in many of them, often unwisely. He said, a person with a new idea is a crank until the idea succeeds. Now, in closing, I, I thought about, I, and Twain would never have said this about himself, but I think he combined the best of the past and its traditions with an openness to the future. It's hard sometimes to think about a, a figure in the distant past being open to the future because his future is already behind us. But what we do by opening a library right now at this moment in the print age is, is pretty much the same thing. The more things change, the more they remain the same. We all know that. We're still going to need books, no matter what we call them, no matter what delivery system delivers them to us. Twain loved books, of course, and not least because he understood what they do for us, how books civilize us, to use a somewhat outdated word, both as individuals and even more important as citizens. And that's why I'd like to recur to, to the exhortation now that this place is built to use it. And I'll leave you along those lines with a last remark from Twain. He said, a person who won't read has no advantage over one who can't read. Thank you for this place and for everything that went into it. Wika is really thrilled by this, about it. I live four blocks from here. I'm going to be here all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rand. Uh, before we move to uh, the official signing of our agreement between uh, the school and, uh, and the library, um, I have, I'm going to go off the agenda for a minute to introduce uh, Jeffrey Nichols to you. Uh, Jeffrey's the executive director of the Mark Twain House, and as announced this morning, one of Connecticut's top bosses uh, by Hartford Current Fox 21. So Jeff, come on up. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today as the original home of the Mark Twain branch of the Harvard Public Library. We're, we're thrilled to be neighbors once again and to have this wonderful location uh, and, and this fantastic building. And, and with that in mind, we thought it was only appropriate that we provide a gift to the opening ceremony of this organization. So Matt, on behalf of all of us at the Mark Twain House, including a few board members sitting in this room, uh, I'd like to present with, to you a collection of books from the Mark Twain House on Mark Twain uh, for great. the library. And also, a pass that folks can take out of the library to visit the Mark Twain House and experience the wonderful culture, and Rand put it much better than I could, that experience about Mark Twain uh, and experience it for themselves. So I hope people will take this out and come visit us next door. Thank you very much. Uh, that pass means a great deal to us. Um, you probably know that the library also this year worked with uh, the Connecticut Science Center to distribute uh, free passes to Hartford residents uh, for the entire month of uh, August. Uh, we were sold out uh, in the neighborhoods um, the first day. 
uh, it was a terrific uh, way for a library to connect people uh, to the rich resources of our city. So we thank you very much, uh, Jeff and the Mark Twain folks. All right, at this time, we are going to uh, move forward with signing our agreement uh, and then with the ribbon cutting. Um, so at this time, um, Mr. Davis and Mr. Cooper are going to sign um, uh, one uh, part of the agreement uh, to be witnessed by Mr. Poland and the other document to be signed by uh, Bernie Michael and David McDonald to be witnessed by Dr. Kishimoto. Ready? 